Here we have Kevin Love. And here we have Kelly Olynyk, Two guys who didn't have much to do with each other until the 2015 playoffs when beef blossomed between them in a play that was kind of gruesome and I don't really want to show it this early on. It'll set the wrong tone. This isn't a Saw movie. Let's get to know Kevin Love and find out why those 2015 playoffs were so important to him. After a fun year at UCLA, Love declared for the draft and was chosen fifth overall by the Grizzlies, who immediately traded him to Minnesota, where he spent six long, cold seasons not making the playoffs. Though he did rack up quite a few individual accomplishments, he was particularly adept at outlet passes and had a pretty impressive three-point percentage, especially for a power forward. So why weren't the Timberwolves making the playoffs? Why were they instead very, very bad? Well, perhaps they were bad because Love was overrated, merely chasing his own numbers, and a non-leader who could never be the guy for the team. Even the owner of his team said Love wasn't a star. Speaking of Glenn Taylor, the T-Wolves were terribly mismanaged for years, much to the consternation of their maligned all-star. Seems the bumbling leadership played a role in Minnesota's lack of success, but that didn't spare Love much criticism. It was more like a little asterisk to the Kevin Love can't get it done story. How frustrating for Love. I mean, even if he ignored the critics, being an all-star and spending your whole career excluded from the playoffs sucks. But in the summer of 2014, everything changed. The whole NBA landscape shifted when LeBron James returned to his hometown Cleveland Cavs, where he'd team up with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. Cleveland traded for him and you couldn't quite hear the critics over all the excitement. Remember his stats and his threes and his outlet passes? And last year was his best yet. Besides, how bad could he be if LeBron James wanted him on the team? And for everybody who said Love needed help to get to the playoffs, well, now he had the most help of anyone ever. Or close to it. The new big three in the East turned Cleveland into title favorites. And good news, Love, title favorites tend to make the playoffs. If Love was a debutante, the 2015 postseason was his coming out ball. Finally, he had a chance to prove his detractors wrong on a national stage. Round one versus Boston, he looked pretty good. Made six threes in game three. Game four, he was ready to build on that momentum, but five minutes in, he got tangled up with this guy, Kelly Olynyk. Let's get to know Olynyk a bit and find out why the 2015 postseason mattered to him. Olynyk grew up in a basketball family. His dad was the University of Toronto coach, and his mom was a college ref and a scorekeeper for the Raptors. Olynyk wasn't always a giant and started out playing point guard. When he shot up seven inches to 6'10 in 11th grade, he stayed at the point. At Gonzaga, he was moved to power forward, and it wasn't an easy transition. So in a practically unheard of move, he took a non-medical redshirt year after his sophomore season to figure out his new position. And the work he put in remedied his clumsiness and inefficiency in the post. Combine that with his guard skills, and Olenek was a solid stretch four. In 2013, he led Gonzaga to their first number one national ranking and was a first team All-American. And then he declared for the draft, where he went 13th overall, ahead of other tall guys, which a year later seemed like a good call. Linux rookie season was really promising. He was called smart, he was called nimble, he was compared to Dirk Nowitzki. And I know with hindsight, these simply seem like freezing cold takes, but look at how this 6'11 power forward was shooting in his first year of professional basketball. The Celtics made him a starter for the 2015 season. His role was to stretch the offense. But he lost that starting spot pretty quickly because his confidence failed him. He was passing up open shots, kind of the worst thing you can do if your job is to space the floor. His toughness was questioned throughout the season. He missed 18 games with a sprained ankle, which sounds reasonable to me, but apparently is too long in pro-athlete terms. In March, Hassan Whiteside essentially attacked him in the middle of a game, and Olenek was instantly like, it's all good, I forgive you, which makes him seem like a nice, reasonable guy, but it certainly doesn't make him seem tough. 
Toward the end of the season, he fought that soft label a bit by playing with an extremely injured eye. Olenek was still capable of good games, and the eyeball game was one of them, numbers-wise and confidence-wise. So come playoff time, Olenek was a guy whose value to his team had declined sharply, but there were still occasional rays of hope. He wasn't doomed yet. And he was doing fairly well in the Cleveland series, until he got tangled up with Kevin Love at the start of Game 4. Okay, it's time to show it. They're going for the rebound. Oh no, let, let go. Oh god. Love knew right away that something was wrong. And so did everyone watching, because it seems like the only thing keeping his left arm on is his right arm. That was the end of the playoffs for Kevin Love. Dislocated shoulder, torn labrum, torn ligaments, he was facing six months of recovery. On top of the bodily harm, his long-awaited playoff experience was cut short. His debutante ball ended before any of the suitors showed up because his dislocated shoulder was too unseemly. You guys watch Bridgerton and stuff like that. This is a metaphor we all get and like, right? Poor Kevin Love tried bargaining, a stage of grief, to try and get back out there. Maybe he could play one-handed? Other stages of grief were also expressed, mainly anger, at Kelly Olynyk. Right after the game, Love said there was no doubt in his mind that Olynyk ripped his arm from its socket on purpose. And it wasn't just a heat of the moment, adrenaline from the injury response. Love really thought Olynyk was an ass who did it on purpose. Olynyk kept trying to reach out to apologize and Love wouldn't take his calls. Olynyk pleaded his side to the media, it was all he could do. And he said what you'd expect. He absolutely did not do it on purpose. He's sorry. It was an accident. So, who do we believe? Was it on purpose or not? Well, let's look at the evidence. Starting with the Kelly is innocent argument. Because in this country, you're innocent until proven guilty. And I know he's from Canada, but I don't know the laws there, and I'm not going to look him up. So here we go. Exhibit A. Olenek is the son of a referee and scorekeeper. We can assume he was probably raised with rule following, we don't viciously attack our opponent's values. Exhibit B. The guy doesn't like confrontation. Remember the whole Hassan Whiteside thing? He's nice. He's laid back to a fault. Imagine how much ire it would take to separate an arm from a body. That doesn't fit Olenek's character as we've seen it. If you're currently yelling conjecture, conjecture, I, I get it. Those are kind of flawed arguments. But look at this. Rick Fox tweeted that moments before the incident, Love actually had Olenek's arm in a similar hold. So, seems like it could be an accident if it's just something that happens in the course of a game. But it doesn't really look like Love's clamped on. And, you know, nobody got hurt on this one. There's a tangle up, but there's no tug down and out. Olenek's teammates defended him, basically saying it was an accident because Olenek is a bumbling oaf. This was as nice as people got toward Kelly Olynyk. In the best case scenario, Kelly had gone from he's smart and nimble to he's so bad at basketball he boxes out by just grabbing and ripping at stuff. This was really a no-win situation for Olynyk, and we haven't even gotten to the prosecution's argument yet, which is pretty strong. Prosecution Exhibit A, the media implied it was on purpose. This is the AP syndicated column, not like some local reporter's opinion. Exhibit B, LeBron James, GOAT, implied it was on purpose. Exhibit C, NBA players not involved in the series said it was on purpose. Exhibit D, and the D stands for damning, the guy it happened to said it was on purpose. Love introduced the idea and stated it as fact. No doubt in his mind. And in the court of public opinion, people tend to believe the all-star victim. Olenek got a lot of hate especially from Cleveland sports fans. To be fair to them, they'd been waiting 51 years for a championship in any sport, and without love, they might have to keep waiting. Always want to be fair to people sending death threats. The kid whose local reputation was soft and inconsistent, who barely had a reputation outside of Boston other than long-haired, now had a very loud national reputation. He was a dirty player, a villain. A few days after Love's injury, the Boston Papers declared Olenek expendable to the Celtics. His play wasn't good enough, yeah, but also, he fucked up Kevin Love. 
Weeks later, Love still wouldn't take Olenek's calls to let him apologize. He had no interest in easing Olenek's guilt. Now, I don't know if Olenek had beef with Kevin Love. I don't know if this beef goes both ways. It certainly wouldn't improve Kelly's image to be like, hey, I'm pissed with Love for suggesting I hurt him on purpose and then not letting me ease my guilt and making everybody think I'm either an idiot or an asshole. But I think we can fairly conclude that at least Olenek was very unhappy. Over a month after the incident, Love texted Olenek to say he forgave him. But the fans didn't seem to notice or care. Their minds were made up. Didn't help that the Cavs lost the finals. Love and Olenek never had any more direct beef. Love forgave him via text, that's the end of it. But the lasting impact of this beef seems permanent. Let's jump ahead a few years to 2017. Love was back, looked totally healed, and had a ring. Take that, critics. Olenek was still with Boston and had value off the bench. He'd regained the confidence to rely on his shooting. But he was more well-known as a dirty player. In the opening round of the 2017 playoffs, Olenek got tangled up with Robin Lopez. There was no whistle on the play, but Olenek gets no benefit of the doubt. In the Eastern Conference semifinals, Olenek set a few hard, illegal, head-hitting screens on the Wizards' Kelly Oubre. And after the second one, Oubre retaliated. With vigor. And nobody was mad at Oubre. Good for him, standing up to a dirty player. I mean, he got suspended, so I guess the league was mad at him, but nobody else. Draymond Green, no stranger to cheap moves himself, called Olenek dirty. Green was responding to the Kelly Oubre screens, but his main argument was the love injury. Even a known groin kicker condemned Kelly Olynyk. Of course, Olynyk defended himself. The Boston media defended him, but used that bubbling oaf argument that isn't exactly flattering. Neither guy had a great time in this beef. Kevin Love had to miss his first playoffs after six years of waiting, and the Cavs lost the finals. Olenek became, depending on who you believe, either a dirty player or a large idiot. Oh, and also Kevin Love had to go through a great deal of physical pain that probably shouldn't be discounted. Love and Olenek's paths barely crossed. Our beef was a small moment in time. But the way Love responded to that one moment, given a terrible, terrible moment for him, ended up taking over the image of Kelly Olenek in the public eye forever. Thanks for watching, everyone. Should I have put a trigger warning on the shoulder dislocation clip? Now's the time to ask that question, right? We've got more videos. You can always subscribe. And for Secret Base, I'm Clara Morris. Good night and good game.